Good morning. Um, welcome to another lecture of the NGIGO virtual lecture series. Um, this is another Saturday, and the early days where our lecture takes place in the mornings. Right. So today we're going to continue our lecture on the like it scale analysis and today we continue from our like it scale um 1.1 1 .1, where we actually worked on a five point like it scale that was supposed to use to assess the attitudes of the respondents in this case there were teachers in first and second cycle institutions, their attitude towards epilepsy students. Right. So it's just a little bit of recall. We have this questionnaire. Okay, that's the third word. Taking certain attributes of the respondents. That's the third word, the gender, you know, and call it demographic data. And then came in, and then they had other parts that was assessing the knowledge. But then our interest was on this part. This was the part that we took. We were interested in the like it skill, the like it skill that was used in assessing attitudes and belief of what epilepsy. So this one was a five point like it skill, and then we have strongly agree agree, neutral, disagree, and then what? Strongly disagree. And in our first lecture, we realized that if we go using the mean system, uh, it's likely we'll be producing results that does not represent what's on the ground because of the way the Lakit scale is made, where somebody that chooses neutral may have higher score than somebody that chooses what to answer the questions. So we're going to depend on the cumulative percentage, that the cumulative percentage of four and five, which we did and classified, duly classified uh, with the help of Rex Law and its if function techniques <laughs> that was used in the la why the <coughs> why the <coughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your name is going bacteria, that's <laughs> where <laughs> all right. So we have these questions that was question eighteen to twenty-seven that we actually worked on and then we use in generating uh this particular sheet. Okay, so this was the work that Rex loaded and we all we all agree that he has been able to classify using those ten questions to classify each of the respondents into the person's attitude towards what or beliefs towards epilepsy. So we have this one now, but this is not where the analysis ends. Okay, our interest is to be able to come out with certain information from the group of people that we actually work with. So this one gives us the cumulative. So first and foremost, what I'll do is that I'll copy this and then paste special. So I paste special, and then I will paste only the values. So if you are using uh, the same office like mine, then this is it. You paste only values. In this case, the formula will leave the, the thing. But if you are not using a lower version, that means if you copy, you go to paste, right click, paste, and then choose paste special, and then you paste only the values. So now I have this particular listing. So now, 
I know if I want to tell the story, I cannot just copy this and put it into my work or my thesis and say, I have done analysis. You are still in process. You have been able to categorize them. I have a of their words, their attitudes and beliefs towards epilepsy. So now, if you want to tell the story on this, for example, you could choose to just filter this, okay? You could just choose to go and then filter this one. So if you want to know the number of people that actually had excellent attitude and beliefs, we just select this one like this. And in actual fact, they are only what? They are only four. Hello? Yeah, so you can see it down here. Four out of the 310 respondents that, was, that were assessed, only four of them were adjudged to have what? Uh, excellent attitude towards epilepsy. That is using the classification that we got from the paper that we were using. They are robust paper. But let me say that the scale that was set, 80 and above, and then 60 to, but below than 80, and then below 60, uh, that scale can be adjusted depending on what you are doing, yeah, and what you want to do. But in most cases, it is advisable to use, uh, what you call the scales that you can get reference for them. Okay, right. So somebody may say that, 50 and above is okay. So if your knowledge or your attitude level is scoring 50 and above, that could be classified as good. But rather than below 50, it will be, all, it be said to be what? Poor. And then let's say 70 and above will be seen to be what? To be excellent. Yeah. So we are using what we found in the literature. So if you found any other thing, or you yourself, if you are, you are you yourself subjectively want to make a scale, all I need to do is to what? Interpret what your scale is and what you are using as the markers to assess. So that is what we mean by recalibrating. You can recalibrate the scale, okay? Right, you can recalibrate the scale and then use it. So if you want to look at the number of people that actually presented with good attitude towards epilepsy, we have what, 69, okay? As you can see down here, that is 69 out of the 310. And then if you want those that have poor attitude, uh, like Raj, the rest, they were in the uh, uh, what do you call the majority, and they are what, 230, 30, 30, 37. Now, be careful if you do filtering, you have two different filter counts that come this one that counts all the cells, okay, and then this one that is the filter itself. In actual fact, this one will always go one higher because it is counting this cell. That is the heading as part of it. So if you are not careful and you use the count here, you always be adding one to it. So if you want to use the count here, that means you be minus the what? The heading. So if you have realized this is what? 237. This is what? 238. If we filter the other one like we did, good. We realize that while this one will give us uh, 69, this one is going to give us what, 70 because in all the cases it's discounting the top as part of it. So be careful you don't pick these ones and then mess your data up. Good. So with this particular classification, we, could, we can easily now know that, for example, if we want the number in terms of classification, we can now decide on how we want to present the table. So we can present a table like this one where we have parameters and then we have the different classification that is poor good and then what excellent so by virtue of the filtering that we just did this were the number of people that presented with what poor attitude this were the number that presented with what good attitude this are the number that presented with what excellent attitude now in some cases figures are not easy to communicate so you may want to put it in frequency and so also in what? In proportion. Don't forget when we did uh, the lecture on variables. We say that these are categorical variables and categorical variables, when you are presenting them descriptively, you present them as what? Figures or count and what? Proportions. Okay. So these are the figures that we have. We can choose to bring their proportions. So in this particular case, if you want to bring the proportion, as we can see here, um, let me just clear this one. Uh, we are in SL, so we can easily just click on this. Anytime we click what equal to, it becomes what? 
uh, 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 calculator. So we know the total number is what? 310. Or if you don't know it, you can just do it this way and you get the number. That is what? 310. As you can see, the sum here, 310. Good. So we can just compute that percentage by putting an equal to here. And then we go on to this one. Divide it, that is a slash 310, and then multiply. That is the star. So on my keyboard, it is what? Shifts and then the eight. That is where my star is. Yours could be different. And then times what? 100. So if you do that and you enter, that is this is the proportion of people that presented with what? Four attitude. In fact, since we are working with an Excel sheet, we can just move this thing, this formula down here by just doing a note to fill and the other percentages have all been what been calculated. Mm -hmm. So we now know that out of the number of people that we surveyed, only one point what two seven nine percent of them, if you want to put it in one decimal place, one point two three percent, one point three percent of them had what excellent attitude, with twenty three percent of them having what good attitude. And then the majority, 70 what, six of them having what, poor attitude. This is the kind of communication we want you to tell us. Not to come and then be presenting question 18. These were the number of people who said this. Question 19. Then you have a table for question 19. You have a table for question what, 20. You have another table for question 21, like that. So that at the end of the day, we will have 10 tables out of for the only what, the attitude. And then you have tables and sometimes they also even add another graph to it. And I told you that is double data presentation. You either present your data in text, figures, or what? Tables. You don't present them in both. You don't repeat the results. Right. So this one gives us the, the total, the total respondents, what happened. Okay. But we may also want to know among the classification of people that we worked with. Okay. Don't forget the uh, survey took place among different group of people. Some of the teachers were males, some were what? Female. So we want to find out among the males and the female teachers, which ones have better attitude towards what? Towards epilepsy. That is good information that we want to find out. So that if at the end of the day, it is the female teachers that are having poor attitude, then we know where to direct our, what, our intervention. Okay, what about those who are working in private schools and those who are working in government schools? We know by virtue of those management for private and government in Ghana, there are a lot of things that changes. So what about those ones too? What about the number of years the person has served as a teacher? Experience. So we want to find out whether some of these characteristics actually causes variation in terms of what the person's attitude towards epilepsy. Hello? Right. So what we'll do is that we're going to pick those variables and then pitch them against our classification of what attitude towards epilepsy and then work along with it and then present them and see whether we can have differences in terms of what we have. So our target is to present a table like this. So you can present a table like this, one table, and it brings you what, a lot of information on what you are talking about. Like I told you earlier on, statistics is supposed to give what, summary understanding and information. It's not rather supposed to make things more what, cumbersome. Like we have been seeing, where people's thesis have table 244. So out of the 244 tables and then 73 graphs, which of them are you communicating to us? By the time we even go through 17 uh, tables, we have even forgotten which one was in number what number two and which information was in number two. <clears throat> so you are supposed to use your questionnaires or instruments to pick up information. Then you analyze the information and give us in a just form what those are communicating to us. But rather don't use statistics rather to rather complicate understanding. Hello? 
Yes. Such that every question you have a table to it. So if you have 30 questions, then you have 30 tables. No. Are we okay? Good. So we're going to pick up this and then try and work on it. So those are the few things. Again, if you look at the questionnaire, you realize that a lot of things were asked. If you go up there, you can see a lot of things were asked. It doesn't mean that everything that you ask on a questionnaire should be used for what? For a certain analysis. You yourself, as the investigator, should be able to know which of the things are relevant for this particular question that I want to what? I want to answer. Hello? Yes. Which of the things are relevant? And sometimes some of these relevant things, you can find them whilst you are reviewing your what? Your literature. Because while you are reading your literature, you will find out some of the things that are supposedly are said to be what? To influence the particular attributes that you are looking for. So you may pick those things and then try and work on them. In a form of exploratory, you can choose to explore what you call exploit on other things. Yes, but it doesn't mean that everything you pick when you are trying to construct a certain particular information, you put everything in that particular word information so you have to decide that is what we call analysis you have to decide which ones which information you want what you want to communicate at each point in time so in this particular case i have picked these particular ones i want to see whether gender has any differences on what the attitude of the respondents in this case the teachers towards epileptic students i want to see whether the educational background also have what influences then i want to see whether their teaching experiences also want to have influences again like i told you um these are supposed to have been continuous variable because it's see years that a person have taught but it has been grouped already since we are using uh data from work that have already been done but these are things that you should what you should avoid you can see the categorization two to what eight what is the scientific basis that the person that I've taught from two years to eight years, and the person that I've taught from nine to eighteen. What, what is the basis that they will have different, uh, what do you call it, outcomes? Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I get it, yeah. but we use it as it's at, at a stands now because that was how the data was. We we are using data that have already been done, and then we come to type of schools. Okay, that is for those that are in private, those that are in what uh, governments. And then we come to the level, the level the person uh, is teaching. That is, whether the person is teaching in a first cycle or in a what, in a second cycle. And then it also connotes this one though, uh, that is also uh, what we call the student level, whether it's in the primary school, the junior high, and then the senior highs. So we're going to look at this ones and see whether we can found, find any variation as far as these particular parameters are concerned. With our words, with our uh, attributes, we are looking at the attitude. So what we do is that anytime you are copying things, you make sure, like I told you, that the number follow it. So we realize that whilst we brought those things here, okay, the, we didn't change anything. We didn't sort them and change anything, okay. So, but what you do is that whilst you are copying anything here, you make sure the ID is what follow. Because in later time, you may copy something and then bring it to that place. So let's just clear all the filtering here. We just assume that it's the same data that we have here, that we have at that side. So we will not, but if you sort these things eh, and mess them up, that means that this will not correspond to the first person. Are you getting me? Right. So in terms of the ID, whilst we are copying them to this side, we left it, but we should have brought the ID along with it. Okay, yeah, we should have brought the IDs of the respondents along with it. So, um, anytime you are moving any data, uh, it's it's advisable you move it with what with the ID along with it. Okay, so since uh, we made a mistake, but I know we have not we have not done any sorting with the with the data. So these are the IDs for this particular um, data. Okay, uh, we know that same ID is what we found here. So if we are here, then we are moving this data, that ID will be here too. 
because we know we've not sought this data. But it's a lesson for you. Whilst you are moving data from anywhere, you are kicking any part of it to do anything on it. You make sure you go with the what, with the IDs on them, so that you can trace back. Hello, so that you can trace back anytime you want to do it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to copy this one here on a new sheet. We just copy this and put it on a new sheet like this. Okay, we have a new working sheet. We put this one on. Then we come to where we did our calculation. Yeah, hello. Yeah, so while we did our calculation, let me label the sheet so that it becomes easier for us to navigate. So this one's where we did a calculation. I'll put it as cow. This is where we are building the table. Okay, so we put it as what? As table. Um, this is the new sheet that we have just created. This is a new working word, a new working sheet. So let me put working on it. Good. So what we want is that we go here. We're going to copy this side. Okay. It's good. We just don't make sure that there, there is no filtering there. Hello. So we copy this one from this side straight away and then come and add it to this one here. Are you with me? Yes. Good. So now, what we want to do is, we want to see, so you need to have a book. Uh, and with you guys, you would be the book for me. Okay? Right. So you have these two data together like this. Now, what you do is that you filter. So in this case, we are going to filter all of them what, together. Hello? Right. So we select all of them. And then we go to what? Sorts. And then we choose filter, right? So if we do this, you can have, you see now, all of them are in what? Filtering mode. Hello? Yeah, all of them are in filtering mode. Okay, so now I want to see whether there is any difference in terms of what? Gender for attitude. So we'll go here first, and then we select one of the genders. So since ladies first, let's pick what? The women. So if you pick the women straight away, the number of the women are how many? 144. Are you okay? So 144. You put 144 down. Okay, like I told you, anytime you are doing analysis, you should have a book that you can do your recordings inside. So 144. Okay. 144 to facilitate these things quickly. Um, yeah. I'll also be writing so somebody can be putting them down for me. Okay, 144. Good. So we are doing for females. So for females, for the females, we have what? 144. Good. So now we want to classify the females into what? Their attitudes. That is whether they are good, poor, or what? Excellent. So what do we do? We leave this one there. So it's showing only what? Females. Mm -hmm. Then we now come to filter this. Are you okay? Good. So when you come here first, we deselect and then what? We select excellent. We move on. So it means that among the females, two of them had what? Excellent attitudes. Are you okay? we we'll move on to the next one. We come back to the same place. They will lock the female still. Come to what? Good. So, you see, so among the females, 30 what? Five of them, that is here, 35 of them had good attitude. So you see, the ones that you are filtering, you realize that there's a funnel on it. That there's a funnel on it. So these are the only two things that we are what? We are interested in filtering. Hello? Um, yes. Then we'll move on to the next one. That is for what? Poor. We just do that and we have what? 107. Hello? Mm -hmm. Now, after we've done this one, we can come here and select all. For beginners, you just release the filter from this one. Okay? Then you go back to the next one. That is again to what? Gender. And then this time around, you are picking what? males so you log in the what the males so the male number as far as we can see 
is what 166 that is down here out of the 130 110 so again we come and do the same thing meals and then what the attitude towards epilepsy so we go here we can start with what excellent and straight away we should know that they have what two so if you have females here you have males in terms of those who are excellent we have two then we come to this one the next one is what good we still leave the males locked in we have what 34 then we go back to this one and then we have what poor and that give us what one zero uh, one three zero sorry one three what zero hello Hi. yeah so straight away we can know now we are finished with what our gender variation so if we want to key in that one okay on our table then we can put this thing here and say what gender now it's always good to do the table in excel whilst you are doing the table in excel there are a few things you should you should observe now you realize that you make the test wrap that is wrap the test should not go beyond the other one and if the test is more than the cell you don't bother to what to open it up you leave the cells all the same okay you don't open it up even if the text is what transversing the cell you just wrap it but don't open it up so here we just put what male female because we started with female first and then here we put what male good so as far as the figures were concerned for the females poor we had 107 for the males we have what 130 for the good side we have what 35 and then 34 and then here we had what two and then what two so that does it for the session for the what gender hello are we there good so we go and do same for the other markets but make sure that whilst you are moving on you have unchecked for the what for the female for the gender and make sure that all the gender is what everything is showing other than that you'll be working with only one part of the what of the data that is the only caution here when you are doing filtering okay good so let's go back let's set everything back to its motion we now move on to what education so we'll start with the teacher's education and these are the classification of education that we have we have diplomats we have what advanced diplomats we have certificates and then degree or higher but we will use the every painting be painted uh, policy okay so in this case every diploma be what be diploma whether advanced or ordinary yeah we don't need to normally when you're classifying things also look at the numbers to classify things into so small groups in analysis they become what ineffective because the number is too small right so in this case we will start with everybody that had what certificates we know certificate is what certificate okay whether certificate a or b it is certificate so we will take it like that whether certificate a or b is still what certificate um so in filtering we'll filter what certificate first hello so see these are the number of certificates that we have so for the certificate we have what 12 so this one is what educational background okay or educational level or educational background okay so for educational background this is what we have so once we put in the certificate we can come and look at it from here so it's clear that even from the look at it, there is nobody that had what excellence for the people with what certificates it was what excellent was what zero and then you come to good you have what two two of them good and then you come to poor attitude the rest 10 so you have them here always check it from this side so we have it as what 10 okay 
So we can easily move in with this one quickly and then move on to the next one. So the next one is going to be what? Our diplomat. So both, we will check both advanced and then what? The diploma. We say every diploma, we diploma. So click on what? Okay. So they are 55. Look at it. You see, they are still not many. Right. So let's come and do the same classification we did for them. So again, when it comes to excellence for the diplomats, it was what? Zero. And then when we go to good, we have what? 50. When we come to poor, the rest. Are you there? 40. So we now move on to the next one. Okay, the next classification. Always don't forget to release these things. Other than that, the rest will not show. So we are working with this. We go to this side. And this time around, we are picking what? We are picking, we are unchecking the diplomat and picking the what? The degree. So we pick degree, click on OK, and then come and sort them. So we come to this side. We have excellence. We click on that, and they have what? Four. So the degree people, we have what? Four. Excellent. Then we'll move on to the next one. Good. We have 50 of them. Then we'll move on to the next one. Four. We have 187 of them. Now let's check, uncheck this one again, and then move on to the next one. In this case, our interest is in what? Is in the others, the other qualification that we could not classify. And there are only two people. So which other classification was that? There are only two people. I think, is that why you have a certificate, a diploma? No, this one. Living certificates. Okay. That is that not certificate A or B? No, that. Uh, okay, okay. Those are the people teachers, right? Yeah, I understand it. All right. So, the other certificate people, there were two of them, and they all had good attitude. So others, we have two for good, and then zero zero for the others. Good. All right. So we've done with the classification for the teachers so uh the educational level let's just do the last one and because of time we'll move on quickly okay so we'll take the cycles uh oh no let's take the next one here we'll take this one okay they will move quickly but then we'll do with the others because of time we'll not do for all we'll do quickly and then do for others right so let's take between government and then uh other schools so we just go there we'll pick up this ones so government mission private um do we are uh, mission schools not government schools now so if they are not government are they not private okay all right that is just by the way so let's pick on the government quickly and then work on them. So for the, uh, what do you call it, school governance, we have the government schools. Okay. All right, let's quickly work on that quickly. Excellent. We have how many of them? All the four. Government schools. The next one, we move on to what? Good. Quickly. What do we get? 51. The next one, we move on to the poor, and then what do we get? We get 208. All right, let's look at the other ones. So we go back, we go back and then use the others, okay? All right, so after check, unchecking the government school, let's pick up the mission. If there are no many, we put them together, 36, 30. Uh, this thing, I just want to check something. The private schools, let's see how many are there? Ten. Wow. I think we should put them together, right? They are private then. Okay, so government mission, whatever, private schools. All right, good. So that is 46. So let's pick out 
the attitudes that we found. Okay, there is only good here. So 18 for good, 0 for excellence, and then the rest for the show. So we have what? 2, 9 for the private government. Right. So because of time, we could go on and do for the cycle and all that and all those things and stuff. Okay. So anytime you are moving on to the next one, you make sure that what you release this one and then you move on. So you go on and do this one again if you want to. Okay. Right. Make sure that none is floated if you are moving from one stage to the other. So we can just move on to the circles. Let's try the first and second cycles and see. Okay. So the second cycles, or the first cycle rather. So we go here. Excellent attitudes. We have what? Two. So for the cycles, first cycle, we have two for excellent attitudes. And then we'll move on to the next one. What do we have? We have 30, what? 34, 37. And then the last one that we're going to do with is what? Four. And then that gives us what? One, two, what? Yeah. So continue with that and do that for the what? For the second cycle too. So for the second cycle, the poor is what? One, one, six. Okay. For the poor is logged in already. So for the good, the good is what? 32. And then the excellent we know is going to be two because the other parts have been covered already. So that is what two. So we have that. So we're going to stop here because of time and then continue with the table. So with the table now, the next thing that we have here is what? Educational background, right? So we just put in educational background, right? So educational background, we start starting with what? Others, because we don't know. Oh, okay, let's start with certificates. <laughs> okay, so for the certificates, we had what? We had 10, okay, 2, and then what? 0. Do you have the same figures? For the diplomats, so for the diplomats, we have 40. 15 and then what zero so we just keying them in then we go on for the next one that is what the degree and above okay that is we have one eight seven then we have what 50 and then what four then for the others which the researcher didn't give us good here we had zero Two, oh no, zero, two, and then what? Zero. Good. So that gives us the place for the rest. In. So now let's look at a uh, type of school. Type of school. Good. So the type of school we have private. So the private, we had what? 27, 28, 29, sorry. Oh, a little mistake. So for the private, we have what? 29, we move to what? 18, and then what? Zero. Then for the government, for those, the government side, we have 208, 51, and then what? 4. Good. Uh, let's look at the levels. Levels of teaching. We have the first cycle, right? So those in the first. Okay, first cycle where we have what two one one. 
Oh, uh, it was one, two, one, that seven, two. And then the second. <laughs> the second cycle we have one, one, six, thirty two, and then what? Two. So you see, you build this one like this. Okay. Now, now after you finish, now you want to compute the proportions. Now you realize that for the first proportion that we computed, okay, we computed the proportion this way. Are you there? Right. So this one is what we call row percentages. The percentages are going this way. So row percentage, because it's just one item. Okay. So our interest is in that among the total population that we have here. How many of them had what? Poor. How many of them had good? How many of them had what? Excellent. And that is what we have had here. So it means that if the proportion is going this way, that means the proportion is attributed to only the figure that is, uh, the, the, the particular parameter that is here. This is valid for a single presentation. That is in where the parameter is only one. Now, in the case where you have two different variables in a particular parameter, where your interest is in comparing between those two variables, like we have here, gender. And there are two different classifications in what? In gender. That is male and then what? Female. Our interest here is uh, females were what? Presented with poor. How many females presented with what? Um, good. How many females presented with what? This is excellent. Okay, so what is the proportion of males that presented with good? What is the proportion of females that presented with good? What is the proportion of males that presented with good? If that is your interest, then you do a row what percentage. But if your interest is not on the classifier, in this case, the, the what you call it, the males or the females, but your interest is on the attributes, that is, in this case, the attitude. Then your percentage should not be a row percentage, but it should be what? A column percentage. So I'm going to do the two, and then you see how misleading it could be. So the first one that I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with the row percentages. So in the row percentage, that means that I have to sum up this. That gives me what? 144, right? So if I want to do the percentages, all that I need to do is just put in a list in here, come here, okay? slash 144 and then multiply by what 100 are you okay then i do an autofill for this side and when you are in excel if you want to uh, what do you call it reduce the or increase the decimals you use this one okay so this one is what increase and this one is what reduce so we want to decrease the Decimal. So we have decreased the decimals into two decimal places. Then we come to this side. We do the same. First, we look out for the sum. When you look at the sum, you select it like this. It becomes what? 166, as you can see here. So we have this one. And then we have what? This slash 166. And then multiply by which is star 100. When you do that, this is the percentages that we are going to get. Hello. Um, so let's decrease them again to this. Are you okay? Right. So in this case, when you look at this one, among the females, this were the number that had what? Um, poor. This were the number that presented with what? Good. This way, the number that presented with what? Um, excellent. Okay. Among the males, this way, the number that presented with poor. This way, the number that presented with what? Good. This way, the number that presented with what? Excellent. Are you okay? Right. So, 
this one will give you comparison between the males and then what the females so with this one you will know that if you take the males one point something percent one point two percent compared to the females one point what four that presented with what excellent if you come to the other side good you have 24 percent as against 20 percent for the what for the males if you come to the um poor you realize that you have more of the males presenting with what um poor attitude than the what the females now if you look at this thing like this it can give you an idea whether gender has something to do with what we are having are you getting it so this is the way to go if you want to compare between the attributes in the what in the parameter that is in this case your interest your focus is on the what on the parameter the individual variables in the parameter that is you want to look at the differences of attitudes among the males and then what the females so your interest is in the males and then what the females so it is the total number of the males and the females that is supposed to be the what the denominator hello right so it is the attributes uh, the variable difference in the particular attribute this, this time around we are interested in what gender so our interest is in the different attributes in gender that is when we take males how many of the males are there among the people who are we are calling males how many of them presented with what excellent attitude how many of them presented with what poor attitude how many of them presented with what good attitude if you take the females how many of them presented with what excellent attitude how many of them presented with what good attitude how many of them presented with what poor attitude so if we know that then now we can what compare because we know the number of males that are there so among them what is the percentage of them that presented with what good attitude So if you realize that the percentage of males that present with good attitude are far higher than those of male uh, females that presented with good attitude, then we could say that the males have a better attitude than the what the females. But don't forget that we cannot make those conclusive statements because we are just doing descriptive words analysis. We cannot make those inferential statistics analysis from there. We cannot infer. But descriptively, this is what we are presenting. So descriptively, we can say from here that we have what more females, uh, more males having what a poor attitude towards epilepsy than what than females. But we cannot conclude that unless we have done certain further analysis. We have not gotten there. So descriptively, this is what we have. Now, let's see that if my interest was not on that particular this particular gender but my interest was to ask the question among the poor how many of them were males and how many were them were what were female among the excellent how many of them were males and how many of them were what female among the good how many of them were what were uh, males and how many of them were what females in that case what i have to do is that i'm saying among the poor so how many people were poor this and out of this number how many of them were what females this and how many of them were males this so in that case i should take this one divided by this and then divide this one too by what by this hello oh, if that is my interest so in that case this would have been this would I just have this like this 
and I have what this one slash two three seven multiply by what hundred and then we have this one and now once we have this is the denominator is the same we can just pull it here and we have that so among the poor we had 54% of them being what? Being males. And the rest being what? Females. Hello. If you want to do that for good, that will be this one, this slash 69 multiplied by what? 100. Right, so we can have the results and then just pull it down. By just pulling it down, we can have that. So with this one, among those who presented with what? Good attitude, we had what? 50% or 50.1%, if you want to run it out, or 50.7, rather, being what? Females, and then 40.3 of them being what? Males. Hello? Hi. We can do that for the last part of it, then I will give my speech. That will give us what? 50-50. Good. So in this case, this one, slash four, and then this one, we get this, and then if we slash this one, we'll get that. That is 50-50. Hello. Now, if you do data analysis this way, okay, looking like the second one, the tendency is that you will jump into a wrong conclusion. It's high. Even this one is not showing much. If we go down there, you will see it well. Now, because the male and the female numbers are close, so you don't even see the differences well. But look at the excellence. So from the excellence point of view, we could say that as far as the performance of, uh, what do you call it, the teachers were concerned. Are you getting it? They were the same. They were presenting 50-50. Between the males and the what? And the females. They all presented what? The same proportion of what? Excellent attitude. But that's not the case. It's not true. Because the number of females is different from the number of what? The number of males. So the fact that you are having two, two in each of the places, does not mean that that is the proportion of what? Of males and females that are there, are equal. So if you come to look at this particular one, you realize that there are what? Higher number of what? Females that are presenting with excellent attitude compared with what? Males. But if you are here, the value is what? The same. Are you getting the differences? So you have to decide on which proportion you are doing. And I'm saying that if your interest is in comparing, then you should use the total number of that attribute. That's the variable classification. You should use the total number of the variable you are using for the classification. In this case, gender. So if you take the female, it should be the total number of the female. If you take the male, it should be the total number of the what? Of the males. But not the, what do you call it? The attributes in question. So, depending on which you are using as a denominator, that is how the proportion is what is explained. Yeah. So, if you are using the females as the denominator, then the proportion now becomes what? Among the females, this percentage of the people presented with what? This. So, if you are using this as the denominator, then the interpretation goes what? This way. Are you getting it? It goes from the female to the attribute. But if you use the attribute, total attribute to do it, then becomes the attribute to the what? To the female. Watch this. This is a common mistake that people make. And 
in cases in cases where there are no differences they tell you there are differences in cases where there are differences they tell there's no difference so for example if we dwell on this one like this we will see that the performance as far as those who presented with excellent was concerned among the male and female there is no what there is no difference but in natural fans a higher proportion of what females presented with excellent than what than males though descriptively because we have not done any inflational statistics are we okay good so if you come to the good if you look at it you could say oh the difference is almost 50 50 again is that not it because 50 point what point seven and then 49.2 so good and excellent too the difference was not much but in natural fact 27 percent 24 percent of female presented with what good compared to what 20 percent of the what of the males hello yeah so these are the things that you should watch here that is why i always like people do analysis starting from simple spreadsheet like excel because when you go to spss to do same we will not be doing it this way we'll just be checking either we want the row percentage or a column percentage and it could be very confusing as to which one you should even check and which one you should what you should take you should understand this from here so this one is basic principle hello Hi. yes okay let's move on to the next one so on this basis since our interest is not with the attributed percentages for the individual but our interest is in what for the uh, what we call the classifiers we we'll use the classifier proportion in doing all the what all the percentages so when you come here it's going to be what 12 so it's going to be 12 it's going to be what this one over what 12 times what 100 like i told you is garbage in what garbage out so a lot of people do a lot of these things and they think they've done analysis but they are communicating nothing so be careful what you put in there right if, if the million people uh, yeah, the total is the same. You are coming to the same conclusion, but in most cases, you are not going to get the same thing. You will appreciate it more here when we do this. Okay, here the numbers are very different, so you appreciate it even more here. So let's go to this one. What is the total number that we have? We have what 55, right? So we go here. This one's 55 multiply by what 100 and then we enter let's spend some time to understand the basics so that when we get at the top there there will not be any confusions so we get it here the next one what is the number two four one right good so we have this this one slash two four one multiply by 100 there we get it we can easily just do an autofill for that Good. So we just go to this side. Okay. And this one we have what? Two. So we don't need to calculate. We're just going to get 100 here and then zero here. Good. So if we do what we think is right, we are supposed to do how we want to communicate this thing. So by variety of the classification by certificate, we have 83% of those who presented with certificates. They were what? Four. Are you okay with that? Hello? Hi. Right. We have 72 of those who presented with degree poor. Uh, sorry, diploma poor. We have 77 of those who presented with degree presented with what? Poor. Okay. For those with certificates, we cannot actually classify. They were zero. And then it goes on and on and on to this side. Okay, so now let's do the same thing. In this case, we are using the top one, right? So this is what that one is going to be. Equal to this slash what? 237. And don't go and click on the 237. If you go and click on the 237, when you work it, you get it wrong. Because as you pull the cell down, they will be picking the cells as they come. The denominator will change. So always type the denominator. Hello? Hi. Right. 
So you just pull this one down. You have put uh, a glass in it to, to lock it. To lock it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so you come to the next one. You have this one. This. So I should pick this and put a dollar sign. Is that what you are saying? According to Raji. According to Raji. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I didn't pick the first one. So I'm putting this slash this. When I pick this, I should make sure I lock it with what? With the dollar sign. The multiply by hundred. So let's try what Raji is saying and let's see. It's before. Okay. You want to lock the what? Okay. Reggie said it should be before. Okay, so try whatever Reggie is telling us. So put it in red before. <laughs> it works. It works, but let's see. Let's see if you pull it down, it's going to give us the same thing. Reggie, we have a problem. Do you know why we have a problem? You should have put it inside. I should have locked this book side now. <laughs> you see, it is picking the cells down here. So the first one is correct. It has picked this. That's the denominator. Look at it. You see the first one, the denominator. You see why this one is zero? Because the denominator is here. Zero. And you cannot be. And this one, the denominator is this. Uh -huh. So that was what I was saying. You should, you should, you should not do that. Reggie said we should lock it both sides. Let's see what Reggie says. But we can still do that. I like trying. Fred, if you lock those sides, it won't work. <laughs> okay. So you see that you should be careful when you are. It locks a column. Uh huh. So Reggie's popular today, right? Right. So, so it is this. You go here. You slash by you type that. That is what six nine <laughs> multiply by. That is where the problem will be. That's exactly what I'm saying. If you click on it and you screw it, it will be changing as you move down. As this cells change, the next denominator will be this one. The next denominator will be this one. The next denominator will be this one. You don't believe that? Okay, let me try that. Okay, let me try that for the sake of learning. So this is it, isn't it? This one slash what sixty nine, okay, divided by multiply by what hundred, good. So the first one is correct. Now let's go and do an autofill for that. If you pull the autofill, you realize you are getting different answers. Yes. But why is it that when you type manually? Yeah. So that is the figure. Yes. The second line where we have so there is nothing there, but it's still exactly. No, no, don't forget what we are doing. What we are doing is we are doing this over this one times 100. This over this one times 100. This over this one times 100. This over this one times what? Times 100. So, in order to just autofill it, you just type the denominator. Because if you don't type the denominator, and then you move the cell, what will happen is that you go and click on the denominator. Whilst these ones are changing, this one will also be what will be changing. The denominator will also be what will be changing. And you are having this one here because this denominator is zero. So the second, this one, you are having a figure there, but the figure is wrong because the denominator is what? This. Are you getting it? Uh -huh. So be careful the way you do auto calculations other than that. You end up with garbage. Okay, let's go on to the next one. So the next one is going to be zero. We know these ones are going to be zero, zero, zero. We should just do it anyway. So it's going to be this one. Uh oh, what do I do? The next one is going to be here. We say what this, and then we click on this one, and our denominator is four, multiply by what hundred, and then we just enter. We know it's going to be zero, but we are still doing it. No, then we get a hundred there. Yeah. So now let's see. If you have this one compared to the other one. So with this one, if you are not careful, this is what you're going to say. Hello. Hi. So you see how the interpretations have changed. So if you have this one, you are going to say that as far as the poor presentation was concerned, it was the degree holders 
that's presented with the highest level of poor. Are you getting me? Yes, because they are presenting what? And then you will tell us that for those that presented with diploma, only 16% of them presented poor. Yes, and there's others, others, do that one is zero, so the others were the best. And then, the, what do you call it? The certificate people presented with what? Only 2% of them presented with what? Poor. So, this is how the interpretation has completely changed. Do you appreciate it? Yes. So, if you are not careful, you'll be communicating something that is completely wrong. So you come back and tell us that 100% of the people who presented degree presented with excellence. And at the same time, this percentage of them presented with what? With poor. So how can 100% of them present with excellent and then 70 something percent of them present with this and this? And that is how I see people interpret this data. What this one means is that, what this one we are having here means is that, for the people who presented with poor, because we are using the poor as a denominator, so that should come first. For the group that presented with poor, this percentage of them were what? Were diplomats. This percentage of them were what? Uh, uh, this percentage of them were degree. This percentage of them were diplomats. This percentage of them were what? Certificates. But that is not a story you want to tell. Because if you tell the story that way, it may mean that, okay, the degree people had a poorer attitude towards what? Epilepsy. Rather, this is what you want to communicate. Among the certificate people, how many of them presented with what? Poor attitude towards epilepsy. Compared to the diplomats, how many of them? Compared to the degrees, how many of them? And you realize that the diplomats presented with what? Uh, the certificate people presented with what? Higher levels of what? Uh, poor attitude than the other groups. So you are only 12 and 10? Yes. There are 12 and 10 of them what? Presented with what? Poor attitude. <laughs> are you getting it? And the other 16 of them Present sixteen percent of them presented with what? Good attitude. So be careful with your denominator if you're communicating and know what you're communicating. People think, oh, frequency and percentage, frequency and percentage, and they just do frequency and percentage. But in most cases, you realize that they are miscommunicating. Because as soon as you present this one, anybody that sees this, it has turned the thing what? Upside down. So what I'm saying is that you use the total of the things you are doing using as a classifier to do the what? The percentages and not the attributes that you are classifying. You are using the factor to classify. So sometimes it could be column or what? Row. Depending on how the table is what? Being made. Okay? Remember when we had a table where we have pregnant and then what? Pepora. If you want to compare between pregnant and pepora for certain attributes, then in that case, our uh, interest will be using the pregnant and the pepora to do what? The division. So in that case, it's going to be what? Column what? Uh, percentage and not what? Row. So in this case, it is what? A row percentage. That makes meaning. So it's always what you want to what? Communicate. And it should be what? A meaning. It should make meaning. Hello? Yes, analysis is not as simple as people think. You just put it in SPSS and then what? You, you run it. That's, yeah, that's what we are choosing garbage in garbage out. So people just put things in SPSS and then just run cross tabs, frequency and proportions, and they just get results. But most of those results don't represent the meaning they want to communicate. Okay, so on that note, because of time, we'll quickly move on with the others and then go. So this one is going to give us what? We just did this one. That is what? 47, right? So we just come here. We have this. 
over what? 47 times what? 100. So we just move that quickly. And then we'll move on to this one. Oh, sorry, I didn't do the, the total first. The total is what? 263, right? Yeah, so the total is 263. We just put this one here. We have what? 263. We multiply that by 100. And then we just move it up. Good. So we can do the others. We can just now put it into two decimal places as we wanted, uh, which is not so important anyway, but we will do that later. This one gives us how many? 160. 160. Right. So that's going to be this over what? 160 times what? 100. And then we drag it. Then we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> you are saying it's equal to drag. <laughs> okay, the next one is also what? 150. Yeah. So it's going to be this over 150 multiplied by what? 100. And then what we do is that we just pull it. Yeah. So we can do that. Now we have this. We have not finished our table. We cannot present a table while we have the frequencies somewhere and then the proportions somewhere. Okay. So what we want to do is that we want to put the proportions, each of the frequency, each proportion in parentheses. Okay, behind it. So what we want to do is that for this one like this, we want to do it this way. Yeah. And then each proportion is going to be what? 76 point what? Uh, let's say 45. Yeah, 0.45. We do that. And then we'll move on to the next one. We're going to do it. And move on to the next one. I'm going to do move on to the next one like that. Then we now have the table. Yeah, we can equally do that. But to save time, we could easily do this all together because sometimes you have a big table, so you have to waste a lot of time doing that typing, and you don't have that time. So what you do is that you try to find a way of doing it all together. So you may first because we have used a lot of formula in doing this thing, we will just copy this one like this. And then paste special because when I click here, you can see on the activity team, you see the formula that I use there. But I'm interested in only the values, so I will just copy it, paste it at the same place. This time, I'll paste it only with the word with the values, and that means now I have only the values there. Are you okay? Right, so now I will select all the figures like this, which are the frequencies, then I go to this side, okay, where the numbers. Ah, the number format is. I click on the small arrow here and it will open a dialog box for me. Hello? Hi. Yes, it will open a dialog box for me. Good. So when it will open the dialog box for me like this, my interest is to come to where? Custom the numbers. When I come here, it's a whole number. So I just choose one of these. Okay, what do you see here? When you see a point and then figures around it, that means that the number of decimal place you want the thing to be. Okay, but it's a whole number, so I want it to be like this. So I will just put the bracket behind it. And as soon as I click on this, it means that I have a bracket behind every one of them at once. Hello? Good. So I will come for this ones, like this one, the percentages, do the same thing. Go and click on this one. Come to what? Custom. And this time I want them into what? Two decimal places. So I'll pick something with two decimal places. I can add. If I add, just for you to see, if I add more zeros, that is how it's going to be formatted. Have you seen that they are all in what? Four decimal places. Right. So you can do the formatting at once with this one. So I'll come to what? This side. I'm choosing this, but I want them into what? Two decimal places. Then I'll put what? A bracket behind it then I click on okay so now I have all of them at two decimal places with a bracket behind it. is that okay right as you can see I have them all in two decimal places with brackets behind them but look at what happens when I select one when you come to the activity this thing you realize it still doesn't recognize the words the format even though you can see it here at 76 point what point four five it doesn't recognize it when you put the Kesa on it. Right. 
So we have to find a way to let SL recognize it. Okay, the formatting that we have done. So what we'll do is that we will copy this whole sheet like this, the exact sheets. We will just copy it and then send it onto an empty word sheet. So when we come to a word sheet, we just paste it here. Then you click on this star to select all again. You copy it again and then you bring it back into your SL. This time you can paste it anywhere you want. So if you paste it like this, this time around when I click on it, look at what happened. The same 76 thing. When I click on it, have you seen that now I recognize the, word, the formatting that I have done? Hello? Uh -huh. Right. Look at the first one. When I click on it, you can see it doesn't recognize the formatting. When I sent it to S, uh, Word and bring it back, you realize that now it recognizes what? The formatting. So sometimes you have to trick SL small. Yeah. There may be other ways of doing it, but this is the way I found to do mine. Okay. So now I have the parenthesis, the open one, and then the close one. The open one behind the frequency and the close one behind the word, the uh, proportion. So now I need to put them together. Are you getting me? So what I'll do is that I will just copy this one. Okay, I will just copy, uh, what do we call, the, the labelings. Yeah, there are some merge cells, that is why we are having uh, that one like that. So I'll merge it. I will just copy the labeling here like this and come and put it at one side here like that. Then I can also copy the heading, this heading here, up to excellent. And I'll just come and put it here. Hello? Right. So when I'm here, this side means I should put this one and this, uh, what do you call it? This one and then its corresponding proportion, this one together. Do you agree? Yes. So I'll come to that place. Instead of typing, I'll put what? Equal to sign. Then I'll type C O N. Now my C O N is so I want it to bring this particular uh, what do you call it uh, function that is concatenate. Okay, concatenate this one. When I type C O N, I'm searching for concatenate. So I will just double click on concatenate. So when I double click on concatenate, I click on the first figure that is what this one. Hello. Hi. Then I bring what a comma. Then I go and print, click on its corresponding proportion, this one. Then I just click enter. Hello. Um, have you seen what has happened? Mm -hmm. So I now have the figure and its proportion behind it. Hello. Um, right. So what I do is now I will just click on it like this and then I will autofill. So when I autofill, you can watch it. So where I am here, that is the 116 and it corresponding percentage, that is what, 77.3. Hello? Hi. Yes. I can, in fact, I can, in fact, pull this one at the back like this. But for a beginner, it is dangerous if you want to do some of these things. Too much of autofill. Okay? But I could just move this one backward like this and all the rest will be done. But be careful. You could go and do it one after the other. Okay? So you can see that now I have what? The 67, 69, and its percentage that is what? 22. You can see they are here. Are you okay? Yeah. Right. You can see that I have now what? The 4, and its percentage that is what? 1.2. They are all filling. So anytime you do any of these things, make sure that you have what? Double check and because see you are doing it right now. No, you don't need to open anything up. Still maintain the cells. It is because you want all the aspect ratios to be the same. That is why you are doing it in the cell. So you see, no matter how big the file is, with these little formatting tricks, eh, you can do something. Imagine if we were typing, where would it have been by now? We wouldn't have even finished the first, uh, first column. But we are finished with just like that. Hello? Hi. Right. So now we have the table the way we want it. So this is still a rough table. We will now copy this table into our Word document and then polish it up at that place. So what we're going to do is that 
we're going to copy it exactly the table don't add any cells to it so don't go beyond it like this just copy only the table with the cells uh, your this thing inside like that and then send it to your word sheet so let's say that this is the word document we want to put our table inside so when you come just paste it you paste it here okay now when you paste it here there are two things that you are supposed to be looking out for when i put the cursor on this thing like this you realize there's a small box that is appearing here hello when i put the cursor on it like this you see where this thing is there's a small box that is appearing here now if i put the this thing on this small box you realize that the arrow changes i'm talking about this small box that is here not a big one there's a small box there if you can see it and then this one so if i click on this one this time it selects the whole table and then at the end of the table you realize there's a small box there okay yeah these things can prove to become very vital when you are here because you pull and the thing will check okay right so you hold this small box down here with the arrow you click and then hold and then you stretch it so with that small box you can stretch the table to each of the sides and down as you want it to be hello yeah so now you can see the small box well okay this is the small box that i'm talking about so you can now stretch the table any way what you want it now you click on this one okay you realize that the arrangements are not the same okay so now if you are using a lower version than mine you come right click inside and within this things you find alignments okay cell alignments but if you are using a version like mine you go to what layout okay and the alignment is here cell alignment is here so you want to align them in what align what center so you realize that as soon as i click on align center the cells has now come into what into four hello mm -hmm. right now they are aligned now you want the very first cell so you select the very first uh, column you don't want them to align this way you want them to align center what center left so you come and click on what center left so that i shift it to that side hello Hi. so that is center left so if yours is this you still come here right click and then you come to align cell alignment and then you align to what center center left so if you are at center left now you have the table in a in a bit of shape that you like so you click on this one like this you can pull it down okay you click on this like this to select the whole table or the star when you are here you can click on the star or the distance to select the whole table okay then what happens now is that you can change your fonts you go to home now we say we want what we want palatino linotype so we want palatino linotype it's better than it is for this work it is better than the what the times new roman so we want to choose palatino linotype okay and then we want it in what 12 so we're using palatino linotype what 12 so that is the font for palatino linotype 12 so you are polishing the table okay so people say when you bring it to where it's like bringing the table to salon and you polish it like the ladies do okay men salon we don't do anything we just go and cut our hair <laughs> all right let's continue then so after you've done this you now want to put certain borders to look at it like i keep telling you after the abolition of the slave trade now everybody is looking for independence no one wants to be behind bars so gone are the days when we put table in what you call it in prison okay when we use prison tables when i meant prison tables like this when you come and use these prison tables to present data in this case the data is in what is in prison this one does not mean that this one correspond to this or this one correspond to this or this one corresponds to that okay so we have also abolished prison tables because the figures are not what they are not slaves so we stop doing that mm -hmm. so what we do now is that you can go here and go to what border and the word shading you choose border and shading okay and then what you do is that when you come to this side you want the borders to be a little thicker so you change it uh to one quarter 
it's okay. You choose two and quarter, and you apply it to the top and to the what? To the bottom. Then you click on what? Okay. So now your top and your bottom of the table has been done. Hello. Good. Now the top header, you want everybody to see that the top header also. So you just select the top alone. Go again to your border and shading. Okay. This time right, apply it to only what? Only the body. So if you have this, you have an excellent what? Table. Hello? Yes. You are not done yet. Since these are headers, you want them to be what? To be known. So you select them like this, and then you put what? Bold. Hello? Yes. You could decide to bold this side, or you could decide to bold the headers for each of them. So this one becomes what? Gender. This one becomes what? educational what background and you may want them to be spelled as capitalized in each of the words and if they are here if there are any spelling mistakes you want to fix them here then type of school you may want to bold it okay level of what of teaching you may want to bold it so you realize that whilst we are in SL we didn't give any space whilst we're filling in this one it wasn't like after we filled with a total responder, there was a space before we put the word, the gender. And I realized that we didn't put any space between this and this one also. But when we came into, uh, what do you call, the word, you realize that the spaces are the same. That is exactly what you want. You realize the space between this and this is the same. The spaces between the cells also, for each of them are also what? Are also the same. So you have a table, and looking on this table, you can communicate. Hello? Hi. Yes. So in this case, you have summarized or analyzed the data. Okay? And you can draw information what from it. You've not finished yet. You need to give us a title. So if in this case, if you give us any shortcuts here, if there were any abbreviations, you may want to interpret it because the table should be self-what? Explanatory. The table should be self-explanatory. So now, apart from those of us who are in this room and those who will be virtual audience, who knew what we have done and what these figures represent, nobody will know that this thing is a frequency and this particular this thing is what? The corresponding proportion. So the first thing you do is to put a footnote and tell us what the figures we are seeing is. So that goes by saying data is presented as, in this case, as what? Figure with corresponding percentage in parentheses. Good. So it means that if we see any of the figures here, Anything we see here, the figure and its corresponding parenthesis is what we are seeing. Hello? Without it, we cannot know whether this is the mean, the standard deviation, standard error of the mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean, or whatever it is, median, or whatever. So, this is very, very what, important. That is the footnotes. It's very, very what? important the footnote is very important mm -hmm. then you might want to give us a title every table should have a title so table titles are put at the what at the top and then figure titles are put at the what at the bottom so for figure there is a picture so the picture speaks first before the title but for a table the title tells us what is what is in there. This is a convention. So table titles are always on, on top of the table. Figure titles are always what? Below. Hello? Hi. Right. So to put a title, you want to insert captions. So you right-click, you select the table, 
you right click the table and then go to what insert caption so when you click on insert caption you have dialog box like this if it is not a table and it's a figure you can choose it so you see as soon as you choose figure you see below the selected what position but as soon as i choose what table you see above selected what item hello if it is an equation to you choose that so i will just click on that so as soon as i click on that you realize it has given me a table one if i put other tables on it and insert the caption the table will be labeled by itself if i delete any of the table it will reshape itself so when i finish this and i'm doing uh, what do you call it table of contents and i want to do my tables i just click automatically and it uploads the table contents for me whilst i work on the data we will get there later as i work on the data if there's any shift in the table i just update it and it will be there the table numbers and the, the the page numbers and everything will come so what i do is that i just put my semicolon here is this semicolon column column right good then i put a title so let's say that this ones are what attitudes and beliefs right attitudes and beliefs of teachers in that particular place that we did the work okay or teachers in first and second cycle institution or something okay but what is important is that in this case you realize that we have stratified by demography or demographic characteristics yeah so this is it you can change this font also the font has to be just the same like the others there yeah and you realize it is it is uh, what you call it pale so you go here and then change it add that to automatic or make it black oh sorry i'll fill in right all right okay where is that one yeah that is here right there. okay i go here and i put it at what automatic i take this highlighting out i rather want to what want to bold it okay then i come here separate this one and then i have what a title attitudes and beliefs of teachers stratified by demographic characters when we say stratified i mean that is what we are using classifying the attitudes mm -hmm. so this is the attitudes and then what uh, or beliefs of teachers that is either it is good poor or what excellent but we have stratified it by what demographic what characteristics and the demographic characteristics in this table include what gender education type of school or level of teaching hello so if you have this now you have a complete table don't forget we left some of the markers there we could have added all of them and then we have a table right so this is a descriptive table okay of the attitudes and beliefs of teachers towards epilepsy students okay stratified by their demographic characteristics so if we look on this table we can make certain deduction can't we yes hello right so on this note don't forget these are still descriptive statistics we are dealing with what categorical outcomes and we are actually interested in what Leckett scale analysis and we started by using trying to get a cumulative uh, classification for the attitudes and then we went through the mean system and realized in this case it's not going to help and then we use what the cumulative percentage to do the classification then after that we try using the classification and then also using certain demographic 
attributes to try and then classify the attitudes that we have gotten. Apart from the total that we have here, we try to see how this classification works within the different what, demographic levels of our respondents. So on this note, um, we will want to end the class here. The next time round that we come, we will use, you know, all the analysis that we did here, we did with using what? Excel. We will try and see how we can do the same analysis this time around using what? IBM SPSs. All right. Thank you very much. And I will meet again, God willing, what? On Monday. <laughs>